unvarnished democracy. So uh, let's just go right to questions and uh, you know, mention what's made of some of the projects we've got on the highway. And I'll just mention one other one that's so important. We were able to secure additional funds uh, to help with mental health counseling for the start of the school year. And Lisa Rockauer and our staff are here putting a lot of hours on this because as you know, coming out of COVID, uh, in a lot of instances, we haven't had the personal counseling that the students really wanted. And what we did is, as I'm chairman of the finance committee, we used Medicaid to try to help with some of the regulatory hoops, the licensing and stuff like that. And I think this is gonna make a big difference this year. And we're really pleased that uh, this high school and elsewhere, the students are gonna get some help this high school. Okay. Okay, we have number two, one, six, and two, one, zero. Raise your hand if you have two, one, six, and two, one, zero. We'll get a microphone to you. Lickety split. I probably, I probably don't need the mic, but. No, you need the mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll okay. okay. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you for being here today. My name is Christy Cocky. I'm currently on the school board, longtime Forest Grove resident. My question today is, we're going to start off big with the Supreme Court. And can you talk a little bit about your support for President Biden's recommendations on reform and where the Oregon Senate stands on that? I think he's got some good ideas there. Now, um, I'm looking at some ideas that might be a little bolder even. You know, the whole question of the Chevron doctrine and congressional intent. Well, I personally think that the Supreme Court's role, if you look at the Founding Fathers and the like, was designed to really deal with violations of the law, not unraveling congressional intent. And so I've introduced a proposal that would allow Congress to override the Supreme Court if the Congress felt that they were moving away from congressional intent. Violations? Absolutely. Good point. And you may have um, seen that I had some things to say yesterday about uh, Justice Thomas. I'm very troubled by what's going on here. And, you know, the Finance Committee, where I'm the chair, we've got jurisdiction over tax avoidance, which tends, which tends to be some questions that can, can arise um, if you're talking about someone who's giving judge money, the question is, are they taking tax deductions and all the rest? There are also some ethics issues with respect to reporting. So um, I think the New York Times ran the entire letter, didn't get it from our office, and uh, um, something I feel very strongly on. And, and Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island and I have asked that uh, the Justice Department look at these issues to special counsel. What about separation of powers and Congress? Well, it's a, it's a good question, and that's why I spent a lot of time thinking about it. My reading of what the Founding Fathers had in mind is that they were supposed to look at congressional intent. What was the intent of the writers? And I spent a lot of time as chairman of the committee going over everything. But the Supreme Court seems to be going beyond that, this court, and looking at violations of the law or what they feel are violations. And if that's the route they're gonna take, I think Congress should have a lane to be able to override that. But it's a very good point, and these are, these are difficult you know, issues, and uh, you know, this court has uh, certainly taken an expansive set of views on a number of these issues. Give them lots of cheese. Is the mayor in the house? Mayor Truex? Yeah, well, there he is. Okay, good. Pete. So, unfortunately, I forgot to do the little business that we do have here. Um, all of you know that uh, Mayor Truex is essentially a legendary figure in Washington County. Public you know, um, service. 50 years, folks. 5 0 service. <laughs> Fifty years teaching in the school district in, uh, in the Forest Grove School District. Ten years as a Forest Grove City Council. Twelve years as mayor, being succeeded by one.
one of his former students, I might have had. And it has been a great to partner with Mayor Truax over the years and all he's done for the community. And Mayor, if you'll come up, we've got a little bit of a presentation here. Um, something I 